Hi everybody, how's it going? I um, have an American accent uh, because I actually reside in the U.S. I'm from, I live in San Francisco, more specifically Berkeley, which is across the bay from San Francisco. So if at any point the words that I'm using or what I'm saying don't make sense, please let me know. Can I get a show of hands of how many people are Wikipedians? So people who edit Wikipedia. A lot. How many people here are educators, uh, lecturers, teaching and learning staff? I guess there, of course, might be overlap. Overlap between those two. How many people don't identify with either of those two categories? Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> just so I know, just so I know what, what your what your context uh, is. I'm right? support staff and education technologists. Teaching staff. Well, support, like support staff. staff. Support. support staff. Um, I'm a manager of the National Service for Open Educational Resources. I can include Wikiversity and Wikipedia. In this case. Yes. Yeah, okay, then I'm first. Um, I work for the British Psychological Society. Thank you. Okay. This is the premise of the Wikipedia Education Program, which is the program that I work on and that I want to talk about during this 30 minute, 20 minute or so presentation. The premise, instructors assign their students to contribute content to Wikipedia during the academic term for course credits, usually. Supported by trained Wikipedia mentors called Wikipedia ambassadors. And Martin mentioned earlier that he is a Wikipedia campus ambassador. So he supports classes that are doing this project. So I'll come back to these points in more detail. Here's just the three parts of this presentation, a background of the program, an overview of how the program actually works, including some case studies, and finally, I want us to have a collaborative discussion around the benefits and challenges of using Wikipedia as a teaching tool in the classroom. All right, so background. This is gonna be incredibly, this slide is going to be incredibly boring for those of you who are Wikipedians and know this already. Uh, Wikipedia is the fifth most visited website on the internet. It exists in more than 270 different languages. Um, what a lot of people outside the Wikipedia world don't know is that Wikipedia is supported by a nonprofit organization and spends no money on advertising. The four websites more commonly visited than Wikipedia are sites like Google, Yahoo, Microsoft, and Facebook. Multi-billion dollar corporations, for-profit corporations. So Wikipedia, and number five, is a small nonprofit with local chapters around the world, like Wikimedia UK. So what makes Wikipedia work, right, is not money, as I mentioned earlier. What makes Wikipedia work fundamentally is the commitment to sharing knowledge freely. That's what ties people in the Wikimedia, in the, in the Wikimedia movement together. What makes Wikipedia work is that more than 80,000 active editors, and it looks like we have many of them in the room right now. These are people called Wikipedians, folks who edit Wikipedia and contribute to it very actively on a monthly basis. And of course, it's also the concept behind Wikipedia that makes it work, the concept that anyone can edit. We've always known that students are the fuel behind Wikipedia. Many of Wikipedia's most active editors are students, graduate students, undergraduate students, uh, and of course former students, um, as well as faculty members and other academics and educators. This is a chart that shows the number of known university projects on the English Wikipedia. So you can see that in the early days of Wikipedia, when it was founded in 2001, there was a very small number of projects on the English Wikipedia, and as we move along in time, the number has grown significantly. So, in 2009, uh, my team at the Wikimedia Foundation saw this trend, and we thought, this is interesting. What are some ways in which we can support the growth of Wikipedia's use in the classroom? So, of course, as you see, there are already educators using Wikipedia in the classroom, and I think, Lee, I think you used it. 2007. 2007. So, Lee is one of those pioneers, educators, who were doing this before um, most other people have even thought about the idea of using Wikipedia in the classroom. So what my team did 
in 2009 and 2010 is we went and talked to a large number of professors, I'm sorry, of lecturers, uh, of, of teaching staff members, um, both people who already used Wikipedia in their class and people who are interested in the idea but have never tried it themselves. We asked them, what did you learn when you assigned students to edit Wikipedia? For people who have not done it before, what scares you about the idea of using Wikipedia in the classroom? What are some challenges that you faced or that you think you would face? The theme that came up again and again is, is lecturers wanted more support. They wanted more support on using Wikipedia in the classroom. In terms of teaching students the technical aspects of how to edit Wikipedia, as well as how to interact with the Wikipedia community, and also, quite frankly, how to design the Wikipedia assignment effectively. So when we designed the Wikipedia education program in mid-2010, the program design was based very heavily on those feedback. So the program itself. Here's how it works. Again, the instructor assigns students to edit Wikipedia as part of class. They're usually supported by what we call campus ambassadors. Uh, they could be teaching assistants, students, or support staff on campus, or people not affiliated with the campus at all. And the role of the campus ambassadors is to provide in-person Wikipedia support to students on how to edit Wikipedia. So they, for example, would hold workshops and lab sessions on campus where they teach students how to edit Wikipedia. They provide in-person help. Then there are online ambassadors who are all experienced Wikipedia editors themselves who provide help to students online, so over uh, Wikipedia talk pages, over email, and other virtual means. Uh, in addition, we also provide printed materials like brochures and handouts, as well as video tutorials that show students and guide them through how to edit Wikipedia. You have this orange brochure, I believe, in your, in your packet, which are case studies of how professors have taught with Wikipedia. So, the um, Wikipedia education program officially began in mid-2010. These were some of the first universities to participate in the program. It was quite US heavy in the beginning. Uh, so these were professors from these universities were some of our first participants in the program. In the first year, we worked with 800 students across 47 courses in 32 different universities. It's pretty good for the first year. Um, altogether, our 800 students contributed 8.8 .8 million characters. If you translate that into pages, that means almost 6,000 printed pages. How high would that be? Uh, worth of content that the students added onto the English Wikipedia. And because it's Wikipedia, and so many people use it on a daily basis, these students' articles reach more than 50,000 readers. That's amazing. I mean, that's something that never get in academic journals. So one story actually from the first year, we had a student uh, at Georgetown University who um, in October 2010 decided to write about the National Democratic Party of Egypt. Right, this was an Arab studies class and he thought, why not? I'll write about the National Democratic Party of Egypt, October 2010. A couple months after that, a revolution happened. In Egypt, and his article, which was getting you know a couple hundreds of hits, uh, suddenly was getting thousands of hits every single day for several months in a row. And this guy was so excited. I mean, this is his work for a class at Georgetown, and he was impacting thousands of people a day. And he he, he keeps telling everyone that story. Um, and so do we. Um, so now it's been after four or five full academic terms in the program. And these are all of the countries that are part of the program. And I, I think this, this is really amazing. Um, these are all of the countries that have a Wikipedia education program running. The, the type, the program itself, the actual mechanics of the program uh, are not identical across programs, of course. We have some programs that not, just, not, that not only work with higher education, but also work with secondary education. I believe the, the Wikimedia uh, Deutschland, I think we have representatives here, uh, the, the ambassador structure, I believe, is, is a little bit different um, from, from the others. And so I should point out that the Wikimedia Foundation is only involved in the operational management in 
a very small number of these countries, actually just in Egypt, Brazil, uh, and India, and we're trying, and right now the US, but not for much longer. And the other programs are all run locally by the local chapters or by dedicated individuals in those particular countries. So this is rapidly becoming a, a global movement. At uh, Wikimania, the annual Wikipedia conference in Washington, D.C. last uh, two months ago, we had a education meetup during that, during that conference. And we expected about 30 people to show up. And that's what we told the people who were letting us borrow their venue, that there would be about 30 people. Instead, more than 80 people came. And this is this you know, tiny little office space for a nonprofit. They were totally overwhelmed. But it was great, because it really showed how much enthusiasm there is on a global scale around using Wikipedia in the classroom as a teaching tool. Uh, and it was just so great to see people from all over the world at that event. So I want to show you just one example of, uh, a student, uh, of an article that one of the students worked on. So this is the article on vocabulary development, which is a student worked on uh, in a group on the English Wikipedia. So let me pull up another tab here. So this is what the article looked like before the student worked on it. Uh, as you can see, it is quite limited. In fact, it only has one reference. This is a good sign that you should treat this article with skepticism. A couple months later, this is what the article looks like after the student worked on it. And they did take it up to good article status. I'll scroll through it. So. Anyway, as you can see, this group of students has substantially improved this article. I think what's most amazing, or one proof of how much how big of an improvement this is, is just look at the references. Remember before it had only one reference. <coughs> so in addition, that article received almost well, received over 2,000 views within one month, in August 2012 alone. That article, Vocabulary Development, received over 2,000 views. That's, that's consistently what students tell us is the biggest motivator for them, is how many people look at their writing. Okay, so um, I'm not going to go into much detail about how exactly instructors are assigning students to edit Wikipedia, because we have some great instructors in the room today who are going to be sharing that with you uh, in more detail. Uh, Lee, I think you're, you're speaking uh, later today. And, and Lee, I just want to spotlight. Lee is from Mexico. Or you live in Mexico. I live in Mexico. You're, you're from the US. Um, Lee, as I mentioned earlier, was one of the people who was doing this kind of assignment before uh, the Wikipedia education program formally started. Um, and Lee, was to assigning her students to translate articles from English to Spanish, is that correct? Uh, and in New Mexico. And using Wikipedia as a translation assignment is actually something not that many professors have done before. It's a really unique assignment, and I've learned a lot actually from me personally about how translation assignments could work on Wikipedia, and I'm actually we're, I'm really happy she's here to actually share her practitioner's uh, perspective with you all later today. Um, there are many different ways of contributing to Wikipedia, as you can see in the orange for sure in your packet. Some professors assign their students to improve existing articles. Some of them assign them to create new articles. Uh, some of them, like Lee, assign students to translate articles from one language to another. And others have students contribute non-text content, images, videos, illustrations, and so forth. Some of them have them just copy edit simple words. So there are many different ways of assigning students to edit Wikipedia. Some assignments are optional, some are mandatory, some are individual work, some are group work. So I encourage you to uh, read through that orange brochure for more case studies on that. Okay, so uh, benefits and challenges. I want this part to be uh, more interactive. So I'm gonna do this in, in, in two parts. The first is I'm going to show a short five minute video of students actually talking about their experiences. 
This video was made um, by the Georgetown University's Teaching and Learning, Learning Center, so their Center for New Design and Learning and Scholarship. And they interviewed two classes, one undergraduate class and one master's level class uh, from the Arab Studies Department that edited Wikipedia as part of coursework. <coughs> These are obviously unscripted interviews where students are freely sharing their thoughts about what they liked about the assignment and also what they did not like about the assignment. Um, and after the videos, I wanted to have a, a collaborative discussion around the challenges and benefits that you see in assigning students to edit Wikipedia. So what I would encourage you to do is while the videos are playing, take notes or just think about what the students are telling you uh, from their perspective, what they see as the, um, what they like and didn't like about Wikipedia editing. Because it's not conventional to kind of 
humanitarian or humanities or social sciences kind of papers that we're normally writing. Um, but other than that, we need finding information and kind of factoring into the paper. It was a new challenge, but it was an interesting challenge to me. All, all of our work at university is, is, is papers and videos and things like that that no one really gets to see. Whereas this is like one thing that I can send my parents to be like, <laughs> and they can send it to whoever they want to send it to. Whoever they want to see it. Um, and I don't know, it's nice to be, nice to be congratulated for now and then. You're sharing information about topics that are you know, not well known about and that you're putting it out there, trying to transcend kind of the academic world and uh, about topics that you know are part of our focus, like we're Middle Eastern. You know, specialists are inspiring to be, are inspiring to be Middle Eastern specialists. Uh, and we got to write on things that we chose, so things that were of interest to us. Um, and being able to share that information, anyone can have access to it, uh, is very exciting. You know, Bahrain is a small country, and there's not a lot of information about it, and I was you know, very fortunate to be able to you know, add to the, the Wiki Project Bahrain or whatever to you know, enhance the amount of information people have access to about a place that's not so well known about, even though the issues that are there are very serious. Okay. So, <coughs> let's start with challenges. Just raise your hand. What are some challenges that you've heard or that you can think of for students or for the lecture about using Wikipedia in the classroom? Let's start here. One is the translating the academic writing skills that we encourage students to use into Wikipedia and Wikipedia writing style. Mm -hmm. It's a different style of writing. What, how is it different? Um, it has to be, Wikipedia needs to be much more pedestrian. It has to be understood by everyone mm -hmm. rather than in academic writing there's a style, there's, 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 there's tone that is not always um, the objective point of view, mm -hmm. which Wikipedia was for. Thanks. Um, absolutely the opposite, because Wikipedia writing has to be anything but pedestrian, oh. because you've actually got to engage an audience. Um, and, and that's the big challenge. Uh, we know that Wikipedia is reliable, and we know that Wikipedia <laughs> is, is comprehensive. <laughs> the, thing, <laughs> the, one, the thing that it's not is readable. <laughs> And that is the big letdown at the moment with Wikipedia. It's supposed to be something that's accessible by the whole human race. Every single person on this planet. And that's what you're writing for. You're writing for an audience, not just for somebody who understands your own jargon. Yeah. You've got to engage that audience, and you've got to make absolutely certain that it's everybody who can get the work that you're producing. Mm -hmm. And that's a whole new skill set that these kids just haven't seen. Mm -hmm. So the challenge I'm hearing from both of you is that you need the writing for Wikipedia needs to be for a lay audience. It needs yeah. to be for yeah. the, the common person, if you will, instead of just for people who, who know your jargon. I mean, from the point of view of the instructor, isn't it one of the problems how far students are learning the skill of actually using the Wikipedia, in editing a Wikipedia article and so on? and mm -hmm. how far they're using skills of the academic discipline they're studying. And that might be an issue for instructors about, yeah. you know, what's the balance between that? <coughs> you know, how far do they want to assess people on their ability to use the technology and so on? And how far are they interested in the discipline that they're using? Mm -hmm. So it helps you, uh, just to paraphrase, how to balance between <coughs> teaching about Wikipedia skills versus the core subject yeah. Yeah. Uh, skills. Yeah. Um, I saw the, uh, the first challenge that was spoken about as uh, translation for, say, I don't know, the lay person is actually one of the biggest strengths, that you really have to understand the information to be able to translate it to someone else. Um, one thing that I noticed a couple of times was people saying that the way of editing was jarring to their writing style, and it, sort of the experience of editing was the were a challenge for some people. So editing itself yeah. can be challenging. It's got the obvious challenge of learning the code to be able to you know, make links to things, and a couple of people alluded to it, I think, but I think that can be quite off-putting <coughs> um, initially until you've got it and then it's second nature. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a lot of hands on. So <laughs> yeah. uh, in, the, in the very back. 
Um, well, it wasn't something that was mentioned, but it strikes me that I guess if, if the whole project degenerates into a kind of morass of, of information, mm -hmm. then to some extent I will need to fit together in some kind of structure of jigsaw, which um, you know is, is clearly a tough uh, thing to do. But uh, ultimately, there needs to be a, an oversight of that to some degree, I suppose. So that's where I've gone as a channel. Hi, just a response to the first question. Um, about the types of text in Wikipedia. Um, we do have different genres of texts in Wikipedia and in my session this afternoon I'll be looking at these very descriptive texts which a lot of language teachers are saying, oh this is not going to help our students with academic writing, but there are discursive texts in there as well. And so I will be talking more about that today. My name's Alana, um, that's language teaching with Wikimedia. Thank you. I just want to elaborate a point that uh, made my gentleman wife. All right. Um, I think the problem is not just for students, but for the lecturers themselves about language. But, um, I'm not sure that it's risk of offending people here. But <laughs> um, <laughs> university, university lecturers will always understand, um, and academics generally always understand uh, how to communicate to a lay audience. Um, one, of, one of the jobs I've done for the British Psychological Society is campaign a house magazine, which is meant sort of for a, a general audience, uh, uh, although all psychologists, but um, psychologists of different stripes. Um, and we're always trying to get academics to write in, in terms that could be understood by people who don't understand the job. It's a difficult task. Most don't seem to, it's very difficult to get them to understand how to do it. So I think you need to take a step back and think, how to educate the lecturers themselves in how to like, educate their students. So the, so the lay audience challenge is not just for students? No. Certainly for the instructors. Yeah, I think the, the, it's not so much about Wikipedia. This is actually just a common problem. If you're going to set an assignment to write a, an article that can be understood by a lay person, then it's not actually about using Wikipedia to write the article, it's about how you set the assessment criteria. So actually, when it comes to writing for Wikipedia, you just need to get the students to understand the assessment criteria that you're actually setting, rather than this is a Wikipedia article. And it might be that you derive those from Wikipedia and, and the, uh, the conditions under which they submit an article. Um, but I, I'd hate to think that you're setting them um, an assessment criteria that is understand the technicalities of being an editor on Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. So I just sort of, you know, I want people to step back and say, well, how do we integrate the Wikipedia article and what are the assessment criteria that we normally write? You know, and also they're communicating that this is a separate kind of assignment, because actually then I want you to go back and write proper academic papers, because that's another skill that you need to have. So the assessment criteria for me are the key issue. Mm -hmm. let's, let's take uh, two more challenges. Um, I, having run a course where 100 students were editing articles, some of them responded very publicly to the idea it was work in public, but there was a tail who found it actually very challenging. And I see my biggest challenge for the year ahead, trying to get that tail a bit more engaged. The trouble was they left it to the very last minute to make any changes to the articles at all, and then did no further work on them, so they left a mess. And I'm aware of dumps <coughs> of and editors as a result. Um, so, I mean, I, I agree that some students find it very positive indeed to be working in public, but there's, that's, not, that's not the only experience. So, I think um, one of the students on the video said that, that it's very time consuming, it's more time consuming than a traditional yeah. written assignment. I mean, the idea you have to, to look after your article once you've written it. Yeah. It's a bit alien. It's a different experience, totally, yeah. Let's take one more, one more challenge. You might have to go here. Yeah, yeah, so. okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, so going back to the video, one challenge that I heard was maybe where to introduce this assignment. That perhaps at the graduate level, I heard uh, one of the students reflecting on how the research wasn't challenging, and I think that that might come from um, Wikipedia's lack of original research. So how to separate out? sort of secondary nature of this 
within the classroom and the students that you're teaching with, whether they're graduate or undergraduate, and sort of where it's appropriate to introduce this. So just to summarize really quickly, um, and let me know if I'm missing anything important. So some of the main challenges that were raised were the repeating theme is Wikipedia writing styles different from academic writing styles. Students are not used to the kind of writing they're expected to do on Wikipedia. Uh, a really big part of that is how to actually write for a lay audience instead of just for uh, experts in the field who know the jargon already. But there's also how to write neutrally, right? That's also, I think, one difference between Wikipedia writing, which is meant to be neutral, and academic writing, which often puts focus on persuasive writing, so having uh, one kind of fighting for one point of view, if you will, so getting used to that as well. Um, there, there seems to be some, there's also the big challenge of how to actually, I guess, design the Wikipedia assignment, both in terms of what the assessment criteria should be uh, for the Wikipedia assignment itself, what class level to do this at, right? So undergraduates versus graduate students, the assignments and the, the goals should probably be different, and also how to avoid the common problem of students waiting until the last minute uh, to, to do the assignments, which is, of course, not unique to Wikipedia assignments. Um, there's, uh, there's also the point brought up of how, to, how instructors can balance between the Wikipedia part of the course, so actually learning the, the technical aspects of editing Wikipedia with the actual subject matter of the course. So how those two uh, can work together in the limited time frame of, of, a, of, a, of an academic term. Um, and, and there's also the point brought up that learning the wiki code is often a challenge for students, um, that the Wikipedia assignment often takes more time, both for students and for instructors, I should add. It's, it's not easy work, right? Like it's, not, it's not easy work for the teacher either uh, to assign a Wikipedia <coughs> project. Um, and the high visibility of your work is both something that really encourages students, but in some cases it's, it's also adds a lot of, of stress, I guess, and, 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 uh, and make, it really scares some students. Am I missing anything? Um, we've had um, some experiences in Sweden. And there are two things that they look big issues. One is relevant. So it was this class, uh, A-level students, and they were writing about their own um, soccer team and their own soccer stadium. And that was not really well appreciated by the small community of active Wikipedians in Sweden. There were about 100 of them. So they more or less took it away. Um, so there were some issues with the interruption between the students who wanted to engage and the small community who were very, very active and dedicated to keeping Wikipedia um, um, relevant. Um, that's two big issues in Sweden at the moment, or it has been. Mm -hmm. So, sounds like the students ran up against some policy issues. Yeah, like exactly. Community norm issues. Exactly, and so also how to interact with the community, because mm -hmm. they were totally unaware. Okay, so how to interact with the community appropriately is another yeah. challenge. Yeah. And students will need to take time to learn. Yeah. Okay, um, just, it wasn't said explicitly in the video, but if people in universities are translating from academic text to something for a layperson, most academic journals are behind some fancy paywall that only university students can get to. How, th that, to me, seems one of the biggest problems in the university, is people are referencing stuff. How is anybody else going to check their reference? Mm -hmm. I don't have access mm -hmm. to all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Very good point. And actually, I think that's actually one of the, the really good things also, right, the other side of that. That's why it's so important and valuable for students to be the ones writing these articles, right? Because they do have access to those references in a way that I think people outside academia no longer do because there's the, the money wall, if you will. Uh, so I, I see both sides of that, that equation. I, I want to move on to, um, to, to, to benefits in the, in the interest of time. So what are your thoughts from what you've heard or what you've heard from your own experiences of some of the benefits of using Wikipedia assignments? I think most of the things people are citing in their gut reactions as the problems, so it's having students having to write neatly and stick to the literature rather than writing their own opinion, or having to apply IT skills, having to work with something which is intrinsically collaborative. These are all the benefits. That's where the learning happens. Uh, if the students say it's really challenging, well, that's good. They're not really challenging the assignments. It's supposed to be not um, So the, the benefits are the Disadvantage, it just takes a shift in perspective. Mm -hmm. So, you're pointing out that a lot of the challenges are, are also the biggest benefits in the previous because that's what you want students to learn. That's all we need to see, yeah. 
collaboration really important and IT skills, the university is under pressure to teach transferable skills and um, yeah, collaborating with people from different cultures, different assumptions in different time zones, that's a useful thing to be learning in the university before you go into it. Just slightly tangentially, um, I think there's some research which shows that open access journals on average have more, um, are, are referenced more than once behind um, those paywalls. And so I see kind of Wikipedia as being a weapon in the arsenal of, of trying to get towards more open access journals, especially in the world of impact and um, you know the ref and all that kind of stuff. Because it means that you know people are gonna have a, an incentive to kind of try and publish in open access journals and hopefully end the payroll system. Mm -hmm. I'd just like to emphasize Martin's point in a kind of further education field where actually the idea of incorporating, <coughs> incorporating ICT in all courses is, is underlined. So in a slightly different context, that is you know, very much a positive uh, Aspect. Well, the students spoke about the, the idea of choice and authenticity as a as, um, benefit. The choice of the article that they're going to write, the fact that it's authentic learning and that others are going to see it. The, um, there are kind of two things that are very linked. That, um, people seem to feel a responsibility for other people's learning from mm. what they've written and that they felt, I think someone said it explicitly, that it was a privilege to be able to do that. So feeling like your work actually has some kind of impact mm. beyond just what your professor thinks about it. Mm. Maybe even a positive of the language issue. Is some famous scientist, can't remember who, said, you know, if I can't explain this profound idea to my seven-year-old kid, it's not such a profound idea. <laughs> <laughs> and the other is that um, it's an important skill to be able to communicate with different audiences at the appropriate level. And also just, you know, to be able to communicate so I'm hearing this point of challenges are actually benefits from a lot of people, right? Writing for a lay audience is a challenge because students are not used to it, but it's also a very important skill. Being able to use the wiki technology is a big challenge, but it's something that a lot of companies use nowadays, and it's good for students to learn that. Learning to write neutrally, right? Learning to actually collaborate with people from very different backgrounds is also a benefit. Uh, I'm hearing uh, that it's a, it's a huge benefit as the students, and as, as you're pointing out, that students feel that their work are actually having impact beyond the class. And possibly there's also going to be impact uh, on the world of academic journals, even as a whole. Um, uh, that's, that also feeds into the authentic learning uh, point. One thing that students told us they, they get a lot out of it too, well, it's more like their lecturers told us this, uh, is that their students are also getting research and writing skills out of it. Right? They have to distinguish between uh, more summary, fact-based writing and persuasive, opinion-based writing. They have to learn critical thinking skills. A lot, of, a lot of faculty members said that the process of going through an existing Wikipedia article and figuring out what's not there and what can be improved is very similar, actually, to the literature review process in academia. Now, information and media literacy is a huge theme that comes up again and again from faculty members we work with, is that students learn to distinguish between a good source and a bad source. And if nothing else, they learn how to use Wikipedia itself responsibly, right? And how to treat uh, any information really that they, they get online or offline uh, with, with, with a critical eye. Um, anything else I'm missing? Other benefits? Yeah, there's some meta benefits, which are things like if you can actually establish something which is, um, as Martin, Martin puts it, a challenge becomes an opportunity then it gives you an ability to scale what you're doing into other fields. And I'm particularly concerned about scaling education further down the age range, so that Wikipedia becomes a, a viable resource within secondary and eventually within primary education. And there's also the important point to realise that the lessons that are learned here, I'm not talking about benefits of the student, I'm talking about benefits of the entire process here. You need to abstract some of the, the lessons that are learned 
at university level and try to translate them further. Because the truth of the matter is, is that in developing and third world countries, it's easier to put internet access in than it is to build schools. And there's a remarkable opportunity at the present time to be able to make our educational resources available in other countries, in other languages, in places where they don't have anything beyond the rudimentary levels of education. Mm -hmm. And that can be a massive benefit to, to the world as a whole. It's quite mm -hmm. an ambition. So uh, that's a really good, good point, actually, that we didn't cover before, if I understood you correctly. Uh, it ties in, uh, the benefit obviously ties in to the mission of Wikipedia itself, which is providing free, high quality, reliable information to people around the world. And students who are improving these articles and also adding new topics onto Wikipedia, by doing so are also bringing better and higher quality knowledge to people who don't have access. You know, the, the point I actually make, Annie, mm -hmm. is that we learn, the instructors and the people who actually look at these programs, have got to learn the lessons so that the folks in other places don't reinvent the re wheel every every year as we move into other areas. Mm -hmm. The stuff that you learn in universities, which is the vanguard of this environment, has to be transferable mm -hmm. into other arenas and into other phases of education. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. One, one last point. I, I think looking forward as well, to on Alejandro's point that you know we we need to prepare for the future and. I am very much of the opinion that giving our, our students the information skills to be able to use these technologies more effectively. And we can't really anticipate how they will do that, but I think it's it, that, that idea that they're not just passive users, but active participants in the technology is very exciting. And I think we need to be very effective actually in nurturing those skill sets. And I hope that they will produce all sorts of unpredictable outcomes for the future, which will you know, hopefully make things better. Absolutely, so it's also a shift from students being just passive absorbers of information where people dump knowledge into them to where they're actually contributing back to the knowledge base. Absolutely. Okay, so just to close, <laughs> some survey data. Um, we ran a survey with the US Brazil and Egypt program and actually I would love to hear any data collected from the other programs as well. Um, about 80% of our students reported that they found the Wikipedia project to be a good beneficial experience and about 72% of the students said they prefer a Wikipedia assignment for traditional assignments. They certainly think it's a hard assignment. Don't get me wrong, some of them think it's a very challenging assignment as some of the folks in the videos pointed out, but sometimes they wish they were doing just a traditional assignment. Um, but at the end of the day, our surveys are telling us, uh, actually, actually this particular number is from a research project conducted by a lecturer in uh, Michigan that uh, most students will, and at the end of the day, prefer the Wikipedia uh, I want to just end with this quote, which I think touches on some of the discussions that, that you brought up around the, the benefits of using Wikipedia. So this is a lecturer who participated in the Wikipedia education program during the first year. He said, students, she said, students use Wikipedia. It is very critical that we, meaning academia, get on board with this, because it is going to happen if you like it or not. <coughs> students are going to use Wikipedia no matter what their teachers say. We need to work with them, the students, to learn to use Wikipedia correctly and contribute to it to make it better. I think that's, that's a very important point that we need to be about. So finally, here is a link in case you would like to find out more information uh, about the program and especially if you go to outreach.wikimedia.org, click on education on the upper left hand side and you click the tips and resources tab, you'll also find other um, support materials around how to design Wikipedia assignments um, and tutorials for helping students learn Wikipedia every day. Okay, do we have time for questions? Uh, one or two? One or two questions. What about the 28? Right? Yeah, Doug. Um, so, are the 28 percent of people? So, I'm just being kind of doubled up. Here too, mm -hmm. so are the 28 percent of students who um, didn't prefer the Wikipedia assignment and the traditional assignment? Um, and then, kind of, if I, I'm allowed to have a slightly kind of two-part question. The, the next slide, where you talk about this is where students are, therefore we need to go there. Couldn't you just take out Wikipedia and put Facebook? <laughs> what do you think? Facebook is not an educational 
I, I disagree with that. Social media is so tied into Wikipedia in, in so many ways. The, the, the readership level, the, the pressure of more readership pushes you to be more critical and more accurate in the same way that Facebook or Twitter does. I, don't, I think they're completely linked. So you're saying it is, it is it's your support if we replace Wikipedia with Facebook? Uh, not necessarily, but they're linked. Definitely. And they're linked. Yeah. The way that you write for both, I think, is linked. But yeah, there's something, a bigger bigger something like Twitter is reductive. You boil stuff down to all the characters. I mean, like Wikipedia, it aims to be comprehensive, it's actually connected to the literature. It's, it's opposite. It's a one's educational and sense of relevance to what people are trying to do. And the other, the other maybe the specific application of Twitter, but it's not. The intention is to inform in both cases. Indeed. So the intention is the same. You look at the different way. So in that case, I would say that the greater difference is that one is commercial, the other isn't. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's so so yeah. necessarily Facebook is equivalent to Wikipedia, or word work the same, but if students are all using Facebook, maybe schools do have to think, oh, students are all using Facebook, we better figure out what this means for, for education. And maybe there is a place in the role, probably most schools have a Facebook page. Yeah, I mean, I, I, think, I think this is obviously a, a controversial point, right? Because Facebook is a different organization in so many ways, mission being one of them, from Wikipedia. Uh, from my personal uh, perspective, I would actually agree that, yes, if students are using Facebook, then it's good to think about how that could work well in education. That's my personal view, right? Without Facebook tainting um, what education stands for in a way that Wikipedia won't. Because Wikipedia, at the end of the day, I think is much more vision aligned. Sorry, can, can I just add just one thing on that quickly? You, you, you said Facebook tainting it. Could you not replace Facebook with Wikipedia in that, in some people's Sure, opinions? I mean, I, I think, I guess the, I guess my personal view on this is for this particular quote, right? I think the point is to figure out how these, how these different social media projects should be, could be used responsibly in the classroom setting, right? And so there are, there are ways to use Wikipedia that are great for education, as we talked about. But there are also ways to use Wikipedia that are really not good for education. Wikipedia should not be cited, right? It should not be cited. And students who are using it that way are not using it responsibly. And I, I will say the same about Facebook. There are ways to use it, I think, that are good for education. And there are many ways to use it that are not. Can you close there? Yes. I think it's fantastic. I think we do our comfort break. <laughs> Can we thank Annie? <laughs>